everything in this video is not intended as financial or investment advice and is for educational purposes only. I'm Josh Holswich, the head of research at Valkyrie, and let's take a look at the midweek market update. The TradFi legacy coupling, uncoupling, decoupling, recoupling, still in the zeitgeist, still with us like a bad penny. We can't shake it. We are slowly starting to break away from this correlative effect. We got rates, we got Russia, all sorts of stuff happening, uncertainty. Certainly worth paying attention to and being aware of and having an opinion about how that might affect the market, your positions in the market in the near term, if it's going to affect things in the long term. Historically, it hasn't, either rates or Russia, long term. So I'd keep that in mind. But definitely on a back burner for me, just until we're not coupled with SPX, NDX, something that is also potentially brewing is a recoupling to the 10 year and commodities, which are screaming higher, have been screaming higher since March, 2020, marching, no pun intended, higher continuously, definitely worth a watch considering we were maintaining a relatively high connection to the 10 year essentially to the end of 2022 you know we sort of lost the magic lost the mojo in november december but if we do get a snap back if we do get a recoupling here and an uncoupling here kind of like connects or legos <laughs> if we if we switch those connections uh, that would be something for bitcoin and crypto in general as far as how it's classified in uh the mind's eye. Currently, it's seen by many as risk on when it may in fact uncouple from that narrative and recouple with more risk off entities. So let's talk about some on-chain stuff here. Bitcoin hash rate, all-time highs, still screaming, likely going to scream higher as more and more North American miners, companies, gas flaring, cheap hydro, cheap anything electricity. This is unlikely to discontinue anytime soon. The Chinese migration shakeup was probably one of the healthiest things uh, in foresight and hindsight. And for years, many of us that were worried about what was going on in China in regards to Bitcoin mining and the centralization there. So it's good to see globally, we're seeing a massive mega shift in that. Bitcoin transactions per day, low and declining. I mean, it's not a shining metric, even if we zoom way out. There are potential reasons for this, including batching, um, better, smarter ways basically to send transactions on Bitcoin. Lightning Network also moves microtransactions off of this layer and on to Lightning. So those are things to consider. It's certainly better if we have robust activity on the chain, robust fees, and then that way, you know, there's no ambiguity about on-chain activity and price there. But what we do have is strength in active addresses, potentially mining related, uh, but active addresses have continued to rise week over week and are basically sitting at a multi-month high, potentially ready to even breach this December high. And these, if we zoom way out, historically have topped around roughly at all-time highs. Uh, so it would be encouraging to see a continued push in active address activity on-chain to bring us out of the current price range. Definitely something to watch for in 2022, the rest of the year. ETH as well, hash rate, nobody, zero people are talking about ETH's hash rate. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of the proof of stake narrative that's coming. Uh, I, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I see zero people talking about this. It's screaming just like BTC. This is more GPU related, whereas BTC is more ASIC related. If you go try and buy a GP right now, you will be out of luck because many of them are out of stock. Uh, and in combination with supply issues, there's also this demand for GPUs on mining Ethereum. And it's pretty clear that it hasn't changed regardless of ETH fees, which are declining slightly, ever so slightly on chain. We're still seeing hash rate, just mega, mega moon. And this is a bit of a divergence for price because price is still within this range, yet we're seeing non-stop addition of, of hash rate here. Slightly unusual uh, because perhaps goes against what you'd expect. This is all time basically hash rate 
it's always a question. Does it lead price? Does it lag price? Does it matter? You know, but ultimately when I see this metric on anything hit this like S curve of adoption phase, <laughs> there's typically a bigger reaction uh, price wise. Now, unlike Bitcoin, ETH transactions per day on chain certainly are dropping slightly, but nowhere near to the extent that Bitcoin is. ETH transactions on chain are basically sitting at the 2018 all time highs. To me, this signals everybody who was here is still here. Um, any entity, pe person, non person, bot, whatever, they haven't left, regardless of what happens with price here. Unlike 2018, where the last person shut off the lights and that was it, right? On chain activity plummeted uh, for both BTC and ETH. So it is a very encouraging sign that regardless of price activity, on-chain transactions are still robust as are active addresses on ETH. Again, we're in the range basically of previous all-time highs. If we zoom way out, you can see how this looked in 2018 and how it looks now. Definitely different. Another just random side comment about activity. If we look at VC funding in 2018 versus now, uh, the VC funding is extremely high still incredibly high in january i believe it set a record for all-time highs in uh, blockchain crypto vc funding metaverse web3 gaming all that stuff and it's just it's non-stop custody challenger banks lots and lots of fun stuff to me that signals no one's going anywhere you know they don't care about price necessarily because people are biddling <laughs> they're building people are still building right so for me there's there's foundational infrastructure that's coming in that's price agnostic here because it's it's happening whether or not price moves. You know, it, it's not here because price is moving. It's here because people think this is a, a new and thriving industry. And so they're going to take a bet on it. Price-wise though, for Bitcoin, moving back to technicals, in general, this year may be uninteresting completely leading into 2023, right? Maybe into 2024, because ultimately you're either trending or you're ranging or you're random walk, nothing, right? Uh, I'd argue that crypto rarely random walks, especially something that's ultra liquid. There's almost always something going on with technicals. So we're still in the range, yes, but intra range trading is useful in that it tells you, are we about to break the floor? Are we about to break above the ceiling? So what I'm looking here now is basically at the middle of the range. We have three key components here. We have the 200 day moving average which is a litmus test for trend, a litmus test for the masses, let's say. If we're above, we're bullish. If we're below, we're bearish. So we're getting ready to break above that. And a key volume area here, this is where for this range on Coinbase specifically, the most volume has been in all of 2021 to present. That can be viewed as a supply area or a resistance level. On top of that, we have a mathematical level based on the highs and lows of the previous year called pivots which is also painting that resistance at 47. So I really like the confluence of resistance here. And I like also the price structure. This is basically the, the inverted head and shoulders themed episode <laughs> of the midweek market update, because this is one of the cleaner cases for an inverted head and shoulders. I woke up uh, and saw this chart on Bloomberg on Twitter. I nearly cried because that validates me and TA <laughs> to see enough people are crazy to look at this and see uh, something going on here fractal wise. So we've got this confluence of resistance plus uh, a chart pattern, which has a bullish reversal bias. And any chart pattern measures to specific levels based on the depth of the pattern. In this case, we measured a 50 to 53 as a range. Typically you use the 1618 uh, fib and just eyeballing this you can see there's pretty clear horizontal resistance at 52 as well. So it's unlikely that we just shoot through all of that without acknowledging that level at the very least. But in the very near term, within the week or two, I would expect a breakout here. And what you want to see is a strong, no doubt about it, nothing but net breakout above the 44 level with volume, which is what I don't have on here. But you want to see strong volume coming through to confirm that. And just in case you don't buy into the whole chart pattern stuff, let's let's take a look. Let's walk down memory lane with me. We'll go back to September, October. We had a similar setup where we didn't even get this right shoulder. And to me, arguably, this is what I was waiting and watching for was the right shoulder. 
and yeah, I know this, this sounds insane to people <laughs> who've never been exposed to this type of stuff for technical analysis. Um, but if it didn't appear so often, you know, I wouldn't be talking about it. Uh, so we had this non-existent, basically inverted head and shoulders that broke up anyway. And again, measured move, there's your target. We can look at the September, 2019 to September, 2020 non head and shoulders, head and shoulders pattern that arguably, arguably played out as one anyway. We have this extreme low followed by two higher lows in between. You even have what's called here a throwback where we test that breakout level to confirm that there's demand here. And that's always possible that we see that. Something to look for uh, in the next couple of weeks as well. You don't, you don't always get it, but it's something you can look for. So this is certainly a weaker case, you know, but there are, there are more. There are many, many more. Here's June, July. This was what, 2018? Sometimes they're on low time frames. Ideally, you want this to be maybe at least a month for me. You know, if this has the correct structure and volume profile, it typically goes the distance, especially if it's a horizontal inverted head and shoulders. We saw this in December, 2019, another decent case for an inverted head and shoulders that played out as expected. And I'm not going to just show you examples that played out as expected. Here's one from 2019 where I would have thought this would have played out as an inverted head and shoulders. Um, it certainly had a decent structure, descending volume profile. Certainly not always the case. We didn't end up getting a breakout on volume here. Never happened, right? Arguably the trade never triggered. Uh, instead, what we got was additional consolidation throughout all of Q1. And for me, it morphed into what could have been an Adam and Eve had a uh, chart pattern, a V and a U. Even then we didn't get the breakout. We, we had another month of consolidation, but ultimately the target doesn't change. The bias never changes. You're just waiting for confirmation breaking that resistance. So I'm only showing you this example really to say as good as this looks on BTC currently, it's certainly possible that we just go sideways for a long time, well into Q2, even if this punctuated equilibrium occurs where we are affected by raid announcements or Russia, Ukraine conflict. It's a salvageable price structure regardless. Um, and just again, just to hit it home, to show you, this happens all the time. Here's a chart pattern, multi-month, this was 2018, reached it, its expected target. You're just measuring the high and the low here to give you depth and expected targets. ETH, no different currently, very similar, inverted head and shoulders, 4,000 to 4,500 being the target there on ETH, all the same TA applies. And just going down the list here, Looking at dominance, Bitcoin dominance, which is a measure as a percentage of Bitcoin versus the world, there's also stable coins in here, I believe, depending on how this is calculated. So that skews it a little bit, certainly. But again, we have this triple bottom case as we had a triple top case <laughs> in uh, 2019. But when I'm comparing charts to alts, for example, and looking for similar price structures, um, dominance is telling me we're probably ready for continuous flows from alts into BTC. That's what dominance is suggesting here to me. Um, and if certain alts look more bullish than BTC, obviously that doesn't support that theory. But when I look at just individually, this is dot, looks like it needs some time. It looks like, um, doesn't look as clean of a price structure with that inverted head and shoulders. Some of these alts are thinly traded relative to higher market cap stuff. But again, the same TA applies. You want this above the 200 above the yearly pivot. We're still in the range here. Everything's fine. We're not going to just fall off the table or go to infinity before testing those highs and lows first. Dash is a curious one because it, to me, looks most like the ra random walk, as they'd call it, you know, non-specific price action ranging. You certainly have a bearish cross here. We're below the 200. Ultimately, this is a chart that looks like it needs some additional influences from other market participants to have uh, strong directionality one way or the other. Tron, surprisingly, shows, shows strength for, um, supporting that inverted head and shoulders theory. So I'd put Tron in the it's good for and break up bucket. Um, in the near term, Sylv more falls into the dash category for me, sort of non-specific downtrend, leans bearish. And you can see this uh, case for a triple bottom or head and inverted head and shoulders through all of 2019, 2020 into 2021. But the immediate case uh, for bullishness in the near term isn't there just yet uh, for me on Zill. And one way to evaluate the strength of a downtrend, the duration, 
timing, that sort of thing. For me, again, look at the 200 day moving average, um, but also does it fit any other trending metrics or parameters? In this case, it loosely fits uh, just a downtrending, what's called pitchfork here. Pick three points, you get a rate of change. Ultimately, I, I wanna see Zill back above the 200, back above this pitchfork here, this rate of change. But Zill is still within that January breakout zone, still within historic ranges and levels. Nothing completely out of the ordinary here. And then lastly, even something like NEM falls more into the dash camp. Um, but this is another type of chart pattern. I don't know if it has a name, but we've, I've certainly seen it plenty of times. Some people think of it as the Batman symbol, <laughs> but um, sort of the inverted Batman symbol. Uh, again, as long as you have a horizontal level, ultimately that's where price likely wants to go. You, know, you can see double bottom here, evidence for this W in hindsight. Uh, but that's the essential case for any type of chart pattern like this. So that's all I have for this one. What'd you like? What'd you hate? What do you think about uh, rates pending? How will that affect markets? Let us know in the comments below and happy trading.